In the video you're about to watch, I say the word collision a lot. And when I say collision, I mean the coordinates where the pixel colors change. So I'm gonna show you this diagram and I talk about collision when the gray changes to green. And I mean when GLSL decides to paint the following pixel a different color, that is what I call a collision. Don't worry if that doesn't make sense now, it will make sense in the following video. But just remember, when I say collision, I mean when the pixel color changes. Okay. So in our last video, I showed you how to create a simple circle in GLSL, and I set you a homework task of changing the color of the circle and the background. And now at the beginning of this video, I'm gonna type the solution for that task. Before I continue, I want to say I made a mistake with the step function and I said if the value is less than the radius, it will return a one. And if it's more than the radius, it will return a zero. But in fact, it's the other way around. So if the value here is less than the radius, it will return a zero. And you can probably guess that by the fact that here is black. So in the middle, right in the center, the position between the center and the pixel would be zero and the further you get away it will go to 0 0.1 and then 0 0.2 and 0 0.3 and black is 0 0 0 and white is 1 1 1 so in essence if the radius so if the value which is whenever the pixel coordinate is is more than the radius which in our case is 0 0.2 you'd get a 1.0 which will be white and if it's less then you get black so with that in mind let's go ahead and change the colors here Let's have an if statement to say if our circle value is 0, 0.0, that means we're targeting the circle, then the GL frag color should be a vec4 of 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.1, and have an alpha of 1.0. And this is going to be our green color that we've seen before in some of our code. And if it's not 0, 0.0, so it's not black, that means it's the background. Let's make it a gray. So we'll do GL frag color, and we're gonna say vec4. We'll have vec3 inside here of 0 0.15, and we'll have the opacity of 1.0. Okay, so I don't need this anymore. And I've forgotten to make this a comparison operator, and I've assigned it to zero instead. So let's add another equals here. And as you can see, our circle is green, and our background is gray. Now you can actually omit the zero here and it will still work the same. And you can do the same for this and that one and everything still works fine. So now let's go ahead and add a border to the circle. But before we do that, let me explain how we're going to do it. I've created a simple diagram in a design tool called Figma. It's free and it works in the browser. So if you need to do any designs very quickly, you can go ahead and try it out. So this is showing a simple graph, but I've got some X coordinates along the horizontal line and some Y coordinates along the vertical line. And although coordinates work on the edges, so the zero zero will actually be on this edge and the one would be on this edge, I've actually put it inside the box itself. So it's easier to explain what I'm going to do. So this box will have a coordinate of zero zero, this will have one zero, one one, and so on. So with that in mind, you'll see that the bottom left hand corner gets a color of our box at the coordinates 3 3. So if we wanted to put a border around this box, we'd have to detect where the color is made a bit earlier. So what we can do is say to GLSL, when going through each one of the pixels in the GLFrag called variable, when you collide, I know it's usually 3 3, but let's add one to here. So this will be one, three, two, three, and three, three would happen one block earlier. So to do that, we can tell GLSL to add the following coordinates. It'll be X plus width. Width is the border width. In our case, will be one pixel and keep the Y coordinate. So as I said before, that would make this one, three, two, three, and three, three. And we can apply this logic all across the left-hand side. So essentially just this section will be covered with a border. To highlight the right side with a border, as you'll see, this coordinate here is seven, six, and this is the bit we actually want colored, but where the color gets changed is six, six. So we'd have to do X minus one width, which is Y, 
to make this 6-6 six, six, and that will colour this side over here. For the bottom and the top, it's similar to how we get the left and the right value, but we change the Y coordinate. So as you can see here, the collision here happens at 6-3, but we'd want it to happen at 6-2 here. So we'd have to plus 1 here to make it 6-1, 6-2, 6-3. And with that done, it will highlight this whole bottom row with the border at the bottom. And same with the top. This collision happens at 3-6, and we'd want to get 3-7. So if we minus the 1, Y, we'd get this collision, and then we can colour this whole row up here. Now you may have noticed that this bit doesn't get covered neither this corner or this corner. These four corners do not get covered with any of our equations. And for now, we're going to leave it. Of course, if you wanted to address that, you could have this here, this right, and this coordinate here. So you can get this coordinate and say, if it collides with this and that, then color it. But I'm not going to do that in this video because the border would be so small for a sprite so big, the user wouldn't notice the fact that there are gaps missing. So let's go ahead and translate this into GLSL code. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to like and subscribe. And if you don't want to wait till next week to see the code, then please check out the Udemy course in the link below. Thanks for watching.